are very, very pleased to be here with you in Glama this year to present to you the work uh, done with the Lebanese Medical Association for Sexual Health. We're going to be talking about breaking the silence about LGBT health in Lebanon. My name is Hassan Abdus Samad. I'm a gynecologist based in Vancouver. I'm Omar Fattah. I'm a psychiatrist at Bellevue Hospital in New York. You can follow us on Facebook and Twitter at LebLGBT, uh, LebMash or In the last uh, few years, we've seen a lot of uh, articles come out, especially like in the New York Times and other places, on both ends of the spectrum. Some we think a little bit extreme, saying, you know, Lebanon is a gay haven in the Middle East, or Provincetown uh, of the Middle East, but then some, you know, other articles on the other hand, making it sound like it's a very uh, horrible place for gay people to be. So, over the coming slides, we hope to show you that it's maybe the truth is somewhere in between. Over the last 10 years and more over the last few years, we've had a lot of good work happening in Lebanon, as far as uh, LGBT rights or human rights. We have Helen, which is a major organization. It's the first of its kind in the Arab world. started around 10 years ago, and they've been growing since then. Mm -hmm. And it stands for Lebanese Protection for LGBT People. And actually, Helen also means dream in Arabic. And Meme is more of a focused on lesbian people. It's more like a safe space for lesbian people and trans women. We have also the Arab Foundation for Equality, which is an organization that focuses on the uh, supporting any gay initiative in the Arab world, but it's based in Lebanon. We have the Legal Agenda, which is an organization that actually focuses more on the legal aspect of the uh, LGBT rights. So, for example, they represent people who have been arrested, or they usually uh, speak up whenever there's any legal opinion needed. They've been doing a very good job in the last, especially in the last few years. We have some smaller organizations like Think Positive and Color Red, and those are more focused on HIV work and awareness. One major thing that we've seen in Lebanon over the last Ten years or so is a shift in the media, and this is the mainstream media. Uh, it was not uncommon for the media in the past to use the word deviant to actually that was a standard to refer to a gay person, say a deviant or de uh, sexual deviance, and now they actually use a much more neutral term, which is misli, which means it's much more close to homosexual, which is a very neutral term. And uh, in general, also the uh, we have seen a lot of. Uh, uh, reports or interviews or documentaries come out on TV and other places that are much more neutral and even supportive of LGBT people in Lebanon. So this has been a huge shift. We also have MARSA, which is a sexual health clinic, and they focus more on actually giving services. Like uh, there are uh, other uh, things that are not going so well, and Hassan's going to talk a little bit about the, some of the challenges that we have. So it's uh, not really the gay haven. And it might be actually for tourism and for gay tourists, it's beautiful, but uh, for locals there's a lot of challenges socially and legally and of course uh, on the health uh, uh, aspect. In the past decade there has been plenty uh, of um, misfortunate uh, events with the government. I'm going to mention only a few here. In September 2010 there was um, a closure of the largest gay bar uh, in uh, Beirut and actually the longest standing for more than two de decades. And uh, this was followed in May 2012 by a closure of a cruising um, uh, cinema in the second largest city in Lebanon, uh, Tripoli, the city of Tripoli. And only two months later, there was a closure of another similar cinema in the capital, Beirut. Uh, uh, in that incident, 36 men were arrested and were detained, dragged to police stations, and they were exposed to anal testing. Those tests are done by forensic doctors in the police stations, in public, in front of other internal security forces. And uh, it consists of introducing an egg-shaped instrument inside the anal sphincter all the way to the rectum to assess the tone of the sphincter. And to them, they claim that's how they would know if a person is homosexual or not. So, of course, um, we worked on exposing these uh, practices and there was a huge outrage, both uh, locally, nationally, and internationally about the issue and uh, a lot of protests. The term test of shame was coined and uh, gained a lot of attention from the media. Eventually there was efforts by uh, individual activists, nothing really uh, largely organized, especially when it comes to physicians. And there was some improvements um, that happened. Uh, even the Human Rights Watch actually uh, called on the Lebanese government uh, to stop the test of shame. Of course, this did not deter the authorities or didn't make any significant change. We continued to hear about reports of uh, the egg test being performed in police stations. And in, in April 2013, 
which is only a few months ago, they closed the, the, the largest gay bar again in Beirut. And at that point, at that time, they arrested three men and one trans woman. They dragged them to a uh, de detention police station. And um, there wa they were exposed to verbal, physical, and uh, sexual abuse. They undressed the, um, um, the detainees and uh, they took pictures of them. And those pictures leaked through social media to, to the public. Uh, of course, again, it caused a huge outrage and uh, protest. And, and uh, all this milieu led eventually to the Human Rights Watch a few months ago to um, release a very important essential report on police practices within the country. They called on the Lebanese government to and the internal Lebanese internal security for forces to stop the ill treatment of detainees, especially of marginalized groups like the sex like sex workers drug users, and of course lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender individuals. There is a lot of work to be done, but in addition to all the social and legal uh, problems, there is a complete absence of any attention from the healthcare system in Lebanon to this issue. And um, throughout dec two decades almost of uh, the LGBT movement in Lebanon, um, there was absence of any, pres any significant presence of doctors, and I'm one of the people guilty of that because I've been Together, we've been active in the community for more than a decade, and as physicians, we never used our doctor card in Lebanon until recently. We didn't study about LGBT health in medical schools, it's completely non existent. And in uh, residency training, there isn't any diversity training or sensitivity uh, training, even in any, uh, it's not heard of in any um, uh, institution, a uh, health institution in Lebanon. And uh, doctors can easily get away with a lot of legal or unethical practices like the forensic doctors doing the egg test, but also other tests like the virginity test and um, like the purchase therapy. Uh, there is a culture of permissiveness in the health authorities where doctors can go get away with practices like this without being uh, reprimanded. Uh, there is, of course, a lack of inclusion of um, sexual orientation or gender identity in any dis anti-discrimination policy in, in any institution in the government. We tried, like maybe five years ago, activists tried to um, to introduce this in the uh, American University of Beirut, and that largely failed. Um, of course, sexuality by itself is a social taboo, and talking about sex is a social taboo. So if you're going to talk about homosexuality, it's even a worse topic. And maybe all this have led to um, <coughs> the lack of any obvious apparent uh, research interest in the topic. Maybe even if a physician wants to do a study on homosexuality, there isn't encouragement, and uh, of course, there's lack of funding. If you do a, thing, a simple uh, PubMed search on LGBT and Lebanon, you'll find a very, very, very little scientific um, um, papers on that topic. On top of all that, homosexuality is still viewed as illegal. And I'm saying viewed because we have um, Article 534 in the um, Lebanese Penal Code. It penalizes any sexual intercourse against nature by up to one year in prison. And against nature, of course, is translated as sodomy or anal intercourse. Uh, and this, has been, this article has been used to, um, historically to criminalize homosexual acts and also has been used to blackmail um, the LGBT community. So I will allow Omar now to discuss a little bit about the gaps in our healthcare system on the topic. So, and this is going to be actually an introduction to Labmash, wh where Labmash came from. And, you know, one of the things that we've noticed, like I said, is that there is a lot of work that's being done in Lebanon on the uh, more legal aspect and more like social or community building. But we noticed that there hasn't been a lot of work done on the health uh, uh, aspect of things. So we, there are some uh, individual efforts, there are some individuals in Lebanon that have been doing actually great work, but these efforts have remained very um, limited. and. We haven't seen any organized um, work. We are faced with a lot of myth. And in Lebanon, it's not just the lack of uh, advocacy or uh, people working on this, but there's actually a plethora of myth and misconceptions related to sexual health, the LGBT health, and virginity, and all these things. When you talk to people, they're just, uh, you know, amazing the things that people say and believe in. So there's a little bit more, you know, work to do. One of the things that, you know, um, has I mentioned briefly, for example, is reparative therapy. That's actually, you know, we were. Uh, something that is being talked about a lot here in the U.S., but it also happens in other places like in Lebanon. And uh, we have, especially the Helen, but also from personal accounts, we've heard a lot of people tell stories about their parents taking them 
to a psychiatrist or a therapist to get to fix them. And then the problem is that some of these psychiatrists and therapists are trying to fix them actually by giving them pills or you know hormones or whatever. And uh, there's pretty much nothing that's being done about it. And uh, mm -hmm. you know I think it goes without saying that LGBT people in Lebanon face hu huge barriers to uh, to healthcare. So they face them everywhere, but obviously the extent is much more. So this was pretty much the idea or the place where we thought of starting the match last year to address these issues. Hassan is going to talk more specifically about the goals and missions of uh, that match. So we're, we're very excited about that match. Actually today would be the one year anniversary. That match saw the light for the first time at Glama last year. Uh, we had our first launching uh, In addition to Omar and myself, uh, on the executive board, we have a pediatrician from Canada, which some of you have met last year at Glamour. Uh, we have a psychologist uh, from uh, based in New York, uh, a hematologist oncologist based in Boston. We have a medical student uh, who is in Lebanon now, and you, uh, some of you have met him last year. He was the medical student that we sponsored, Lebanon sponsored last year to come to Glamour. And of course, we liked him so much, so we recruited him to the board. <coughs> He's awesome. Uh, we have a nurse, uh, she's the head nurse of the emergency department and has multiple other titles um, in, based in Beirut and we have a psychiatrist in Chicago. Um, so the mission of LabMash is to advance the healthcare of lesbian, gay, bisexual and transgender individuals in Lebanon but also the sexual and reproductive health of all individuals in Lebanon. And to do that we have uh, five objectives. The first two objectives are to spread the aware to spread awareness and knowledge as well as influence attitudes and behaviors of healthcare providers as well as the general public towards LGBT health and sexual health in general in Lebanon. The third objective is, is to impact institute at the institutional level to change laws, regulations, legis legislations within schools, uh, medical schools, uh, governmental agencies, health authorities in regards to um, uh, LGBT health and sexual health. Our fourth objective is to support other organizations that provide healthcare services to LGBT people and sexual health. So we will not be providing services, but we will be supporting organizations that do. So far, we only have one in Lebanon, which Omar mentioned. Uh, the name is MARSA, but we're hoping to have more of um, uh, more clinics like that in the future. And finally, it's very important to work to fill the gap in, in research. So we're going to uh, work on advancing research on LGBT health and sexual health. Uh, and we will do that in multiple ways, few of which would be by providing funds, but also by um, inspiring medical students to build an interest in the topic and the residents as well to, to be talking about it and discussing it. In the coming few slides, I will allow Omar to discuss few ac accomplishments. We're still a young organization, and we spent the first half of last year just in structuring and organizing ourselves. But we had few uh, accomplishments that we're happy with. He's going to talk about research collaborations. We did position statements we published, and we're working on education and teaching activities, advocacy um, uh, trials, advocacy work, and uh, I will talk a little bit about professional development. In the last year, as far as research collaboration, one of the things that we realized with LabMash is that there, there are a lot of other people lo in Lebanon, outside Lebanon, that actually are wanting to do this kind of work, but they're waiting for the opportunity. So when we created LabMash, it, uh, it was, uh, in a way, easy to reach out to these people. So, for example, as far as research, we were uh, uh, approached by the Heartland Alliance to co-sponsor a proposal with them uh, for a research project in Lebanon and by the Research Institute Without Walls to do another uh, research proposal as well. And both of these were sent out, actually, and we're just waiting for the results. And they have to do with working with LGBT refugees in Lebanon. One of the things that's happening right now is we have around a million um, Syrian refugees, and a big part of those are LGBT, and obviously uh, they face unique uh, challenges. And uh, we're also working on, and this is one thing that Hassan's going to talk about in a second, but language is a huge issue that we're actually discovering is that you reach a limit with using the English language, you only reach, no matter what you do, you're going to reach a limit in the amount of people. Once you translate your work to Arabic or another language, you immediately open the doors to millions of other people. So that's something that we actually uh, are very aware of. So one thing that we want to start is uh, 
translating the landmark study on reparative therapy that came out in 2002, and we want to translate that to Arabic and make it available to more people. Then we're also supporting a nursing student in Lebanon who's uh, looking to study uh, inclusion of sensitivity training in uh, medical school at the American University of Beirut. Mm -hmm. We're able to publish a position statement on Sochi in uh, May 17, which was Idaho Day uh, 2013, and actually that position statement triggered a lot of other events. It was very, very well received. We uh, were able to uh, publish a response to a person who appeared on TV and had a very damaging interview about homosexuality. And our reply to him actually was very uh, well received, very timely as well. And uh, one thing that we are trying to work on as well is coming up with some kind of guideline or uh, position statement or paper on homosexuality and religion, but mostly healthcare um, and religion. And something that is a huge challenge in Lebanon is that religion is very, very active in people's lives. And then it ends up being also present <coughs> in the clinic and in the exam room. And we cannot just say, you know, you just can't talk about religion because it's obviously not practical. And uh, But on the other hand, we want to make sure that people take into account scientific facts and the literature when they're practicing medicine. So we want to try to finesse that uh, relationship between um, being uh, inclusive or sensitive to religion at the same time, not doing anything that's against uh, evidence-based medicine or standard of care. And uh, lastly, we're also working on some uh, on a paper related to hymenoplasty. And again, this is connected to a much bigger topic, which is virginity, but not just virginity itself, which is a huge issue in Lebanon, but also myth surrounding uh, what makes you know someone virgin, etc. So we were able to do two uh, activities in the last year. One is with uh, second year medical students at AUB, and this was on LGBT health. That was probably the first time that students at AUB had someone come in and talk to them about LGBT health, and actually it went really well. And we also did a Skype uh, question and answer session with uh, high school students from Dubai, and that was actually very interesting as well. Uh, so one of the, I think, major accomplishments we did in the last year is we were able to convince the Lebanese Psychiatric Society and the Lebanese Psychological Association to come out with statements against reparative therapy. And they did uh, that in uh, June of uh, 2013. And uh, that was actually based on the position statement that we issued. So they really borrowed all of the language that we used in their own position statements. And their position statements said three main things. One, which was a bonus actually, which we didn't really ask for, but they said homosexuality is not a disease. It does not require treatment, and reparative therapy can be harmful and isn't effective. And actually, this was the first time any professional organization in the Arab world that would come out with a statement like that. So it was very, uh, we thought it was a very important step. And, uh, <laughs> I don't know if anyone saw anything about this, but we, you know, it came out in, you know, media here in the U.S., in the Huffington Post, it was in Europe as well, and locally in, uh, in Lebanon as well. And we co-sponsored a press conference in August to promote those uh, statements as well. So we're hoping to build on that as far as well. And Hassan's going to talk about uh, professional development. So in our efforts uh, for professional development, we, we started the, the, our first project, which is Break the Silence uh, competition. This uh, is our first year with this competition, where we called on all students in all medical fields in Lebanon to submit papers on um, uh, either uh, LGBT health or sexual health. Uh, the papers were reviewed by the executive board of LabMash, and uh, the winner uh, is sponsored for a medical conference anywhere in the world of our choice, of course, <laughs> so up to, <laughs> <laughs> up to 1500 US dollars and um, uh, of course this uh, last year we got a student here, this year we have uh, Anton Khouri who was a medical student, he's from the French medical school, it's called USG in, uh, in Lebanon and he won for the paper that he submitted, submitted on hymenoplasty. So this paper we're working um, on it now to edit it and hopefully soon it will be uh, published. So we're hoping with uh, initiatives like Break the, Break the Silence to um, encourage people to talk about sex and sexuality and to talk about LGBT health. We're to encourage them, to inspire them to, to um, um, like build this interest, research interest uh, in, in this topic. Just like any other um, 
young organization, we have challenges. But in addition to the challenges that new organizations have, we have more challenges based uh, in the country where we're based, in Lebanon. Uh, so like we said earlier, uh, homosexuality is still viewed as, as illegal in Lebanon. And this places large uh, um, legal constraints on our organization. Up till now, we did not receive a registration number, even though we submitted about in June. And without a registration number from the government, we cannot open a bank account. So we have a lot of accounting and financial uh, transactions still pending until we get the bank account in Lebanon. So we're trying to work with that. Uh, we have a language barrier in Lebanon. In order to, we have medical schools are either in English or French. So in order to reach for everyone, we have to make our all our publications mm -hmm. available in English and French. But, in all, but also in order to reach all the public, we have to make our publications available also in Arabic. And if we have bigger ambitions to influence or impact or inspire people in the Arab world, so we also need to make everything available in Arabic. And this is placing a lot of um, financial uh, burden on, on our organization and also um, in the time we invest in our work. Uh, we do have an international board, like you know, based in Canada, the States, and in Lebanon. We pride ourselves with that, and um, we think it enriches our organization, but this adds a challenge, especially, especially when we're trying to um, plan for our board meetings, which happen frequently because the organization is new. We have to work with the time zones of where everybody is and um, around the schedule for people. Again, funding, 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 just like everybody else. Uh, we haven't applied for any grants yet, and so far for the past year, all our work has been self-funded by the board member. The political instability in, in any region would impact people's interest. Like, people will not be interested to learn or talk <coughs> about sex and sexuality, of course, and not about homosexuality and health issues when, when you, your main concern is security. And we sense that in the recent press conference that we planned, every time Helen has done a press conference in the past, there was a huge interest from the media to just talk about, and there's a huge presence. And in our press conference that we did in August, there was very little pre presence of the media, especially the local media. Most of the media was buzzing about Syria and what's happening in Syria. So this definitely will affect our work as well. What we have for the future, uh, we're working on a World Health Organization work on LGBT health. We cannot divulge more information on this topic at this moment, but it's something that's happening in the background. Uh, we are uh, connecting with the physicians in Lebanon to make them uh, become our ambassadors. Uh, we're planning on uh, uh, making a lab mask grand rounds in multiple health centers in Lebanon and, and hospitals and to make this a routine activity. Of course, uh, we're planning on continuing with the annual, with the Break the Silence competition. We'll make it uh, annual, an annual event. And uh, from our experience last year with our medical students, we, th we think it's, um, it's a very positive uh, step. We're going to continue working on position statements and lobbying other organizations in Lebanon who are just sitting idle to also talk about the topic. When we talk, it's impressive how when you meet with those people face to face and personally, you see how supportive they are, but they never sound their support. So we just want to not convince them with what we have, but just invite them to, to sound, to, to speak about it publicly. And we will continue to monitor the media for any um, healthcare providers' appearances that are talking about scientific inaccuracies, that are uh, spreading scientific inaccuracies or myths, and we will be responding appropriately. We will continue to network with other physicians and organizations nationally within Lebanon and internationally to support our work. And finally, with all that, we, we continue to work on our structure. Internally, we're working on, um, we still did not have our website up yet, and we're working on our membership and a few other issues. So that's where we are. Thank you so Thank much. You. <laughs> well, we have around half an hour left, so we definitely. I think it's less than half an hour. Oh, less than half an hour, but yeah. around 25 minutes.